Yeah, Germany, uh, I was just there a couple of weeks ago uh, visiting family. And, and you're right, the, uh, these barns, I mean, they are just plastered with really PV like, panels, yeah. you know, like, like, you know, a farm. Like, out in the, I'm, I'm like, whoa, where's the shiny roof? <clears throat> and there are a lot of them. And the Germans, it's black and white. Makes sense or makes not sense. And I, and I kind of like, sometimes in science, I like that approach. Let's try it, of course, it's logical, let's just do it. And I have a lot of cool German <laughs> colleague friends of mine who collaborate on a lot of projects. I forget what I was doing when I was visiting, but my, my nephew, <laughs> he's, uh, he's 15. Whatever it was, he's, he's like, you're, you're wasting, you know, what are you doing? You're wasting something, right? You know, electricity. Yeah. And, I, and I forget what I was doing. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, there's stuff that I do that's completely ridiculous that I'm sure that I can learn and still learn. You learn every day. Yes? Could you just digress for one moment and talk about um, the use of technology in helping coral reefs and well, shellfish? Well, yeah, I didn't talk about that, and I should come back and give a talk about the mm -hmm. DEC permit I have in College Point, Queens, where right. we have a permit using solar energy to accelerate the growth of calcareous bivalves, oysters, mussels, right. and um, clams. And we're attaching them to, it, it's kind of simple science, you know, an anode and a cathode. We attach oysters like we do with corals all over the world, and we're accelerating their calcification growth. So it's um, mineral accretion that accelerates low voltage in between 6 and 17 volts of electricity to a cage underwater, and we put transplants um, there and we're doing, we want to do it with um, the hatchery at Oyster Bay. Um, I'm still, it's my fault that I'm trying to hook up with Dave there. Mm -hmm. where I want to um, do some of this technology mm -hmm. there. It's working in Queens and I have that. I had a master's student from Columbia, two students from Pace, one from Stony Brook. They're doing their thesis on this and we're trying to get it to work. And it's been tough because the weather has been breaking our panels and our mounts and our connectors. We've always, we always have problems associated with that, but we're, we're getting better at it, and we're showing some positive results. My interest is seeing if it increases the immune system for tissue regeneration. But uh, a lot about, I mean, you know as well as I do, more shellfish, the more erosion control, the more habitat, the more biodiversity, the more food, the more everything. You know? um, so we're trying to restore shellfish populations in a small little niche in College Point, Queens. My wife and I have a nonprofit group called Coastal Preservation Network, and we're trying to make a difference in our little part of the world there, and we're having fun doing it. Um, the other thing about, um, you know, I, I, there was an article, if you guys email me, I'll leave my email on the board. They just now announced that oysters are scientifically insignificant. <laughs> they play, no, meaning they play no more role because it's the ecosystems have collapsed. So they're an insignificant, they play an insignificant role as we know them today. Of course, if we can <coughs> increase the habitat, increase the, the forest that they grow around, increase their numbers, they would play a functional role in biodiversity and in the ecosystem. But right now, the way they're growing very slow, if you don't have a guy like Dave or other hatcheries stimulating the growth of them, they're functionally insignificant, which is really sad. Yeah. Is that all over the country, or is that just global? Through? global. Coastal oysters. I mean, yeah, there are going to be ecosystems where you're going to see them thriving, but the overall average, you know, there's more coastal zones where they've degraded here, where they've died off, than they are bouncing back. You know, I mean, you know, look at Boston in the, in the late 1800s. You were not getting your rowboat that was made of wood close to the shore without scraping the bottom of the hull and it sinking. Florida Keys, when I was a kid snorkeling in the 70s, yeah. There was no way you were getting your little skiff that's made of wood into the coastal zone in the Florida Keys. All those branching corals that were sharp calcium carbonate would cut through your raft, cut through your, or you'd cut up your leg. Now you can just walk right. Coastal zones are completely well, What is the long-term prognosis for, Ten I mean, years. As, as all these things become like oysters irrelevant for, I mean, what is the prognosis? 10 years, they'll all be gone. And you'll see what? major collapse. Well, you're seeing that right now. People, uh, the, the little small islands surrounding the Philippines, they're, they're, they've dynamited and polluted their 
Greeks that they're now coming into Manila to find jobs and they get into crime. And what happens to fish populations? Oh, it's collapsing. I mean, whether it's Major Long fisheries, Island, yeah. Sandal, Major fisheries are bad. collapsing. Uh, there's tons or of publications that are coming out. Folks at Stony Brook that are doing it. My wife used to work at Stony Brook as a as a, a journal, as a, an editor for the science uh, department. And I looked at all these papers on fisheries collapsing and food chains just collapsing from shark fisheries, tuna fisheries. I mean, look at the price of bluefin tuna. 90 grand for one fish. Wow. As the price goes up, you can see the population declining. But they won't ban it. You know, they won't, you know, mako shark. They won't ban fishing for mako shark. You know, it's weird. I look in the restaurants and I see endangered species on all the menus, but that's because they weren't collected in New York waters. They were caught out and brought in, and you're allowed to sell it at the restaurant. It's crazy. It's it's crazy. Chili and sea bass? If it, is even, chili, if it is even chili and sea bass that you're eating. Right. You know, no, it might be tilapia. Some other bass. <laughs> scary stuff. Sorry to be gloom and doom, but yes, we can. If, if we care about his kids in the next hundred years, then we do something now. We're going to feel, we're going to get it, we're going to take it on the chin. We're going to get a beating. It's going to be a really, you're going to have a tough time. It's not going to be so great. But your kids' kids, if we care about them, we need to act on lowering the amount of carbon emissions from 400 to 260 to stabilize the next hundred years. So the catastrophe is going to happen. I tell all my students, after you get your degree in biology or whatever, also take your electrician's license and your plumbing license because they're going to be rewiring and replumbing all of um, the coastal areas all over the uh, country. And the jobs are going to be for rewiring, replumbing, so it can handle the amount of seawater flux that's coming into the system. So 